Medical science is making tremendous breakthroughs in the treatment of disc injuries. Percutaneous endoscopy offers patients suffering from disc injuries an alternative treatment that is an outpatient procedure and minimally invasive. Lower back pain associated with leg pain is frequently caused by a herniated disc. This term refers to the rupture or herniation of the disc material which is found between the vertebrae and cushion the spine. This rupture puts pressure on the nerves, thus causing pain. In recent years, patients with leg and back pain have been treated by open surgical procedures and, more recently, by minimally invasive procedures such as automated mechanical techniques. Now, surgeons are able to provide even less invasive techniques by utilizing an endoscope. These procedures include a laser technique we call laser-assisted spinal endoscopy and the percutaneous endoscopic procedure. So with the laser procedure for a big bulging disc that's causing back pain or leg pain, we've tried to um, do a non-invasive outpatient procedure on a disc that isn't herniated it may be bulging, sort of like the balloon on a bicycle tire might bulge but not burst. In this particular instance, we're taking patients who do have uh, signs and symptoms and MRI scans uh, uh, that show a herniated disc, if you will, that's quite out to the side where the nerve is going down one particular leg. Those patients normally would require surgery, would be placed in the hospital in an inpatient status, be put to sleep under general anesthesia and have an incision in their back. So it's a little bit of a continuum from doing a laser outpatient procedure to doing open surgery in the hospital, even with the use of the microscope and special instruments. This is in the middle, and these are patients that we hope to try and avoid surgery uh, by doing uh, an outpatient uh, endoscopic percutaneous procedure with or without the use of the laser as needed. When you enter the operating room, you will notice television monitors. These monitors will show your doctor where the instruments are during the procedure. A fluoroscope x-ray machine will be present to help identify the placement of the endoscope into the disc. You will be positioned on the surgical table. After you have been prepared and draped for sterile purposes, the surgeon will begin by making location marks on your back. A local anesthetic will be given in the area where the endoscope will enter the back. Additionally, an IV solution will be used. Intravenous antibiotics are also administered to reduce the risk of infection. An incision of approximately one quarter of an inch will be made at the point the surgeon marked. Using the fluoroscope, a guide wire will be used to enable the insertion of a tube called a cannula into the disc space. A mechanical device, referred to as a mechanical shaver, is then inserted through this cannula. Verification of the position is again made by fluoroscopic x-ray. Using this shaver device, the surgeon will shear out additional disc material. When the surgeon has completed this mechanical technique, he may then use microscopic instruments, once again under fluoroscopic guidance, to grasp any remaining disc material. Post-procedural healing will generally be completed in four to six weeks, and an aggressive rehabilitation program is generally recommended. In most cases, patients return to normal, basic activities with only common sense restrictions within a few days. Your surgeon will give you specific post-procedural instructions. Spinal endoscopic surgery is 75 to 80 percent effective in alleviating pain. It is minimally invasive. It is performed as an outpatient procedure under local anesthesia with IV sedation. Additional anesthesia may be used in certain cases. Patients return to normal activity in a short period of time. Risks of the procedure are minimal and primarily encompass the possibility of nerve injury.